some of you have heard my presentation yesterday, so, <laughs> so that's all right. Uh, again, this problem, which has to do with uh, traffic congestion in Baton Rouge, it was identified by the advisory group to, the, to do transit. Dr. Hassan has advisory group for the whole transit, so they identified this problem. Uh, the uh, authors or the PIs include myself, Samir Ahmed, Dr. Osman, my colleague from LSU, and Dr. Kajo from LHRC. Uh, Baton Rouge has traffic problems that have been documented for more than 20 years. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Baton Rouge has traffic congestion problems, severe ones that have been documented for over 20 years. You, hear, you read about it in the newspapers. TTI publishes metrics about congestion, and they include Baton Rouge, crisis which is the capital region industry for sustainable infrastructure solutions also. They have, born, they have been interested in the, uh, in the uh, topic of congestion there. Uh, some general statistics about Baton Rouge, they rank third worst in terms of the average annual commuter traffic delay and excess fuel consumed, amount of money congestion is costing the average commuter per year, total congestion related shipping cost per year, and the freeway travel time reli unreliability. Uh, demand in Baton Rouge, traffic demand has been growing steadily and rapidly due to a number of factors, including the natural growth in population, growth in employment, which has been very, very fast compared to other parts in Louisiana, and then the high freight demand associated with the petrochemical industry in the area. Uh, FHWA identified seven root causes of congestion. This, this general. Some of them apply to Baton Rouge, some of them don't. Physical bottlenecks, that's when you have the demand exceeding the upstream, uh, the downstream capacity. The demand exceeds the capacity downstream. Typical locations include, say, an on-ramp. So down of the downstream of the on-ramp, you are going to find demand that may exceed capacity in there. Uh, reduction in number of lanes, things like that. Traffic incidents, accidents, weather events, work zones, traffic control devices like, say, uncoordinated uh, traffic lights or unjustified traffic lights, fluctuations in normal traffic demand, say the whole hourly demand may equal the hourly capacity. But the variation in demand during, say, the different 15 minutes that make up the hour, or what we call sub-hourly variations, that by itself can result in breakdowns. And then special events like concerts, uh, festivals, uh, sports events, etc. For Baton Rouge, number one, physical bottlenecks, and number six, the fluctuations in demand. These two are the primary causes of congestion in Baton Rouge. Previous studies, the work uh, done in the past, focused primarily on adding capacity and eliminating bottlenecks. So it was capacity or supply-oriented type of solutions. And the interest was on the portion of I-10 from the merge between I-10 and I-12 across the Mississippi River west till uh, Highway Louisiana 415. Two types of supply-oriented uh, projects, categories of projects were identified. I-10 corridor itself proposed the projects, and I-10 off-corridor proposed, uh, proposed the projects. I'll talk about the, each one briefly. The corridor-related projects, I-10 by itself is very heavily traveled. It carries significant amount of traffic demand in terms of hourly volumes and the vehicle miles of travel for both passenger cars and the trucks. There is Louisiana DOT D, uh, I-10 Baton Rouge Major Investment Study, 2000. Louisiana DOTD, uh, I-10 Freight Corridor Study, and the Louisiana DOTD I-10 Corridor Improvements Stage Zero Feasibility Study. Uh, these are examples of some of these uh, reports generated by these studies. In here, 
that's one of the most recent uh, things we found about supply-oriented measures. This is a project that involves widening I-10 from the merge between uh, I-12 and I-10 all the way till before, just before the bridge. It does not cover the bridge or west of the bridge. So in here they are proposing adding one lane per direction. The I-10 now currently is four lanes, so they are proposing six lanes, a third lane in each direction, plus some improvements to ramps uh, at some uh, interchanges uh, along 3.5 mile corridor from here to there. The cost of that pro of these improvements are on the order of 350 million and it will take approximately five years or at least five years to finish. I'll show you briefly each one of those because number one, stage one in here is of interest to the discussion today. <coughs> Uh, in stage one, they are proposing to eliminate the existing uh, uh, ramps shown in yellow that lead to Washington Street, on and off Washington Street, and on and off the uh, Del Rempel uh, 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 Avenue or street in there. These cause severe congestion and extensive lane changing and the turbulence created. They are proposing new ramps and long ramps and uh, they are trying to again uh, minimize the weaving that takes place in that section. <coughs> that some, of, some of this, that work was evaluated and I'll show you the results of that. We proposed, as I'll show you later on, to prevent the traffic coming from I-10, I-110, there's I-110 here and the I-10. Traffic coming south from I-110 going to Washington Street We'll try to prevent them from exiting there and let, let them use the, the Rampel uh, exits in there. We'll show you that did not work very good because the exits are very, very close and you can't just close one and leave the other open. You have to consider the whole thing and improve it as proposed in here. <coughs> this is the second part or stage two. Again, it involves eliminating some of the existing uh, off ramps at Perkins Road and creating new express ramps leading to College Drive and new longer ramps to Acadian uh, Thurway. Uh, this is the stage three. Stage three again, there will be add, in addition to adding the lane, third lane per direction on I-10, there will be some express ramps uh, from westbound I-10 to allow traffic to access College Drive without merging and weaving with the westbound uh, I-12 traffic. The off all these were corridor I-10 itself, improvements related to I-10. Off corridor projects involve a New Mississippi River Bridge, we'll talk about that in brief detail. That's a very expensive alternative, about $1 billion. And then the Baton Rouge Urban Renewal and Mobility Plan, known as the BUMP. Uh, this is a very interesting one. It involves improvements to the surface uh, street network and utilization of an older bridge uh, north of the uh, I-10 Mississippi River Bridge. That's a very valid and very viable alternative. The, we heard about it yesterday, or some interest in that, in the discussion yesterday. Uh, West Side Expressway, LA1 to LA415 corridor, combinations of 1 through 4. The Baton Rouge Loop, as envisioned in the Tier 1 Environmental Impact Statement. And the Northern Bypass, as envisioned in the 2004 Feasibility Study. All those were not I-10 related, but it will improve operations on I-10. Uh, none in the previous work or previous studies uh, that we found uh, mentioned in the literature addressed trouble demand management. We were all trying to improve supply. Unfortunately, the demand is very, very high and you will never be able to create sufficient supply to accommodate the current and increase in demand. So both reduction in demand and improvement in supply got to be considered together. So 
So travel demand management is very important to the Baton Rouge area. TDM may take the form of promoting alternative commute options and regulating truck operating schedules, departure times, like what we do at airports. Uh, the goal of TDM is to reduce the number of vehicles on a given road during a particular time of day, especially the AM and the PM peaks. Uh, examples of TDM strategies, telecommuting, staggered work hours, making transit more easy uh, to use, more attractive, better schedules, better uh, routes, uh, congestion pricing for those who would like to travel during the AM and the PM peaks, uh, eliminating toll, uh, the tolls for the hot lanes for those riding uh, in high occupancy vehicles, Likewise, an application to parking for carpools and vanpools, and then creating narrow bike lanes, because some folks express the interest in using the bikes uh, to just overcome the congestion and go to work e uh, faster. <clears throat> uh, we put emphasis or we focused on the I-10 Mississippi River Bridge in this project. It's a four-lane facility connects both East and West Baton Rouge, and as I said, it carries large uh, demand of tra for traffic in terms of volume, hourly volume, and vehicle miles of travel, trucks and passenger cars. Opened in 1968, costs, the cost at the time was 46 million. Uh, there is an older bridge located on US 190 north for 4.5 miles to the north. However, users, and the motorists prefer the I-10 Mississippi River Bridge. Very, let, very little demand uh, really uses the, uh, the old bridge uh, because of land uses and land use planning. The AADT on the uh, uh, I-10 Mississippi River Bridge exceeded 108,000 vehicles per day. Uh, that was in 2005. The bridge experiences severe traffic congestion, particularly the eastbound direction, and that congestion affects surrounding street networks and extends over prolonged time periods that use stretch for long time periods after the peak hours. A new bridge, as I said earlier, was proposed, but the, it's very costly, one billion. Uh, applications of active traffic management controls and ITS along with travel demand management that should be considered seriously in the short term, again, to try to mitigate congestion on the I-10 bridge. This is an example of uh, eastbound uh, traffic going to uh, uh, cross the bridge, and they see the very high volume of uh, traffic, uh, truck traffic generated locally from the petrochemical industries and the AM. And the PM, you add to that the uh, truck traffic coming from Texas and from the West Coast, so it's really very significant uh, percentage of trucks, the mix of trucks. We considered here, I'll show you the results for two supply-oriented, two demand-oriented uh, type of strategies that we analyzed. For supply-oriented, minimizing turbulence at certain uh, exit ramps, and applying ramp metering at an on-ramp west of the bridge to reduce demand. For the demand-oriented, we talked about reduction in overall traffic and reduction in truck traffic through agreements, institutional agreements between the industry, petrochemical industry, and the, uh, the uh, LADOTD and the uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce in, in Baton Rouge. Uh, the data available was very limited, unfortunately. Uh, we're hoping to find much better data, but that's all what we were able to find and use. LADOTD they had uh, traffic volume. It was hourly volume, or no sub-hourly uh, variation that, was that we were able to identify. The duration, three hours in the AM, four hours in the PM peak. Uh, these hourly volumes were used to set up the demand and the VSEM microscopic simulation model. And then we had city labs, street latex. Again, traffic volumes, but that was a full three hours in the morning 
aggregate for three hours p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, that's way very, very coarse in terms of resolution, but we didn't really have a choice but to make some assumptions and use these numbers. Uh, that was used in calibrating VESM and uh, 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 making sure that the results match the observations. Uh, we had also the uh, NP MRDS. We got data from there on travel time and the speed, hourly averages. Again, they were used in calibrating VSAM. Uh, reduction in traffic, that was one of the strategies considered. We here are looking at eastbound from the industries in the west to cross the bridge in the AM peak. Uh, the current percent of trucks is 22% in the AM. Here, reducing it to 16 or under 10. The one shown in red illustrates the annual user costs of delay associated with each percentage. And then the savings are shown in green. And the blue one shows you the vehicle hours of delay associated with each percent of trucks. As you can tell, reducing percent of trucks will definitely help improve the congestion, at least in the short term, till supply can be added. Uh, minimizing excessive lane changes and the queuing at some uh, exit ramps. As I said earlier, we considered the traffic coming from I-110. I-110 there. Traffic coming there here to go to Washington Street and Dalrymple uh, Street. We tried to minimize the traffic coming down south to go to Washington because these change lanes and create turbulence in there. So we wanted them to use the, the rental exit directly, and then they can go to uh, Washington Street using surface roads. That alternative does not work very good because, again, of the proximity of the exits. So really what happened, we moved the demand from here to there. We created more demand at the, the rental, which the supply is not enough there at all to accommodate it. So these were the results. As you can tell, compared to base condition, which is do nothing, routing the traffic did increase the annual user cost of delay and did increase the vehicle hours of delay. A reduction in total travel demand, that's in the PM peak, the afternoon peak. Uh, reducing tra traffic here was not very easy to quantify because some of the traffic, truck traffic comes from out of the state and we don't count to control it. We can maybe you can work on local trucks with the uh, petrochemical industry, but trucks coming from Texas, from the West Coast, there's no way we can control that. So we did not give that consideration a high, uh, uh, high weight there. So for the eastbound and the PM, we we'll consider the reduction in total demand, okay, through the on-ramp that leads to I-10 west of the bridge. Uh, and I mentioned transportation, uh, travel demand management uh, earlier. Several percent reductions from 0%, which is the do nothing till 70%. You see the effect again on annual user cost through results from simulations and the uh, result uh, in savings and the results or the effects on the uh, impacts on vehicle hours of delay. Uh, finally, we talked about ramp metering west of the I-10 bridge. Uh, that's local traffic, and that worked very good, produced very good results, reduced the, the annual user cost of delay significantly, improved the savings to users, and the, the uh, delay itself, vehicle hours of delay went down. Uh, to summarize, the eastbound traffic across the I-10 Mississippi River Bridge experiences severe congestion during both AM and PM peak periods that lasts three to four hours. Uh, both supply and demand-oriented measures must be implemented. Supply alone by adding lanes will not suffice. Likewise, demand alone will not be sufficient because of the supply is not large enough. In the short term, reducing percent of trucks can improve traffic operations in the eastbound direction. 
and also in the short term, ramp metering west of the I-10 Mississippi River Bridge and the PM Peak uh, can improve the operations uh, for the eastbound traffic. And we're ready for questions.